Okay, it looks like we are recording. Welcome, welcome to today's q and I didn't have any questions, so I thought I would talk about blood sugar again, right? I have the blood sugar workshop coming up this Saturday, September the 30th from 12 to 3 Eastern, 9 to noon, if you are on the Pacific Coast or in between. Um, anyway, it is going to be three hours. It's fabulous. You're going to learn all about testing your blood sugar, when, why, um, and all of that, right? What foods affect you? What other things, tools we can use to help? What does it affect? So many health conditions, right? So the first thing I want to talk about was why is blood sugar such a big deal? Number one, if your blood sugar is out of balance, everything is going to be out of balance. So most of the, my world are people who come to me with an autoimmune condition. Um, that's kind of where, that's what sparked mine. I mean, I knew I had a passion for helping people with health. I had never even heard of autoimmune except for like AIDS, right? Um, and so now that I know so much, there's so many different autoimmune conditions, but you're not going to get your autoimmune condition under control if your blood sugar is out of control. You have to, have to, have to get that in balance first. So what we usually worry about is the spikes, you know, blood sugar going up. We need to see how high it goes up. However, we also need to be watching how low it goes as well. And how quickly does it go up and come back down? Or does it go down and drop? And a lot of times when we're hangry, it's because it got too low. Not necessarily, just some of the times. So when we're pricking our finger, this is why CGMs are just so great. When you prick your finger, you have to prick it until it goes up and then it comes back down and then keep pricking it to see if you hit those dips. It's really hard if you are using a regular glucose meter. That's why CGM is helpful because it'll show you all the rises and the falls. And then you can see what was I doing? How long ago did I eat? What did I eat? What activities were going on? That kind of thing. Because relaxation exercises can bring your blood sugar down. Walking, exercising, depending on what excuse me, form of exercise you're doing, can bring it down as well. And so things that are connected to it, I already said autoimmune diseases, um, heart disease you're, is really a, a big one. You know, so many people, most people with blood sugar problems, they end up dying from heart disease. It is the number one killer. Um, kidney problems, we hear a lot about kidney problems, eye damage and blindness. A lot of people have to have toes amputated, um, numbness and tingling in their fingers. You know, All of those things can be related. And eye damage can occur before diabetes is even um, considered a di before diagnosing with diabetes, the damage is already occurring and it's a lot of times irreversible. And so we need to make sure we're looking for not just the spikes, but also the drops. Um, a drop in blood sugar can lead to seizures. It can lead to um, irritability, confusion, um, sweating, shakiness. Those are some different signs that you may see if you have low sh blood sugar and so and even loss of consciousness you know unfortunately a lot of people they just don't know that they have problems um until something bad happens and they go to the hospital and then they tell them so we have to watch for the blood sugar spikes blood sugar falls how high up you don't want it ever to go above 30 like if you haven't had anything to eat for a long time and then you eat something you don't want it to go more than 30 points up and so that can be really shocking too when you start testing slowly um and so some physical symptoms that you have high blood sugar or thirst you know if you're thirstier than everybody else around you that might be a sign um you're going to the bathroom a lot more often than someone it could be that you're chugging your water sip my water right now you want to sip throughout the day half your body weight in water um if you drink half your body weight in water all at one time you're gonna be going to the bathroom a lot right People say, well, I can't drink after so-and-so because then I'll get up all night. Well, if you sip throughout the day, it's not going to be as much of a problem um, because then your body's going to absorb it. It's not going to know. So if you're flooding your body with water, it keeps thinking, we're going to have more water coming in. Let's release it. It doesn't realize that you're just putting it all in right now and not adding it again. Um, and so we, we want to sip it throughout the day so the body feels safe, can hold it, doesn't need to let it go because we're going to have some more in a little while anyway. Don't let yourself get thirsty. Usually when you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So drink before you're thirsty. And a lot of times we mistake our hunger cues for thirst as well. So we think that we're hungry, where in fact, we're just a little dehydrated and need to drink some water. So whenever you are hungry in between meals, have a glass of water, tune into your body. Is it water or is it, am I thirsty or am I really hungry? Um, energy drain. If you have really low energy that could be blood sugar fluctuations um things are blurry you know like i said you're starting to have problems with your eyes 
that is usually a sign of blood sugar, a dry mouth. You know, you have to keep water by the bed. That can be related to blood sugar, some autoimmune diseases as well, but that could be blood sugar, frequent headaches, um, weight changes. For a lot of people, it's suddenly sudden weight loss that they don't can't explain, you know, why am I suddenly losing weight? But sometimes it's I can't lose the weight. I'm doing all the things and I can't lose the weight. Um, low blood sugar is a shakiness. I used to work in a gym and there was a man who would come in who had diabetes and he would work out and he would come running in and need some orange juice or a piece of candy or, and he'd always have it with them, but he would need help getting in, um, getting his things to help with his blood sugar. I just remember him I'm, I'm dropping really fast. I'm sweating a lot. Um, that can be you know, suddenly sweating and it's not hot outside. That can be related to blood sugar. Um, hot flashes um, or waking up in the middle of the night. I'm um, just in a pool of sweat. That can be your blood sugar dropped in the middle of the night. Irritable. Everything's on your nerves. Um, brain fog. You just can't think clearly. Racing heart. See, a lot of these the symptoms are related to other things as well. Um, I uh, was diagnosed with Graves' disease many, many years ago, and racing heart, brain fog, irritability, all of those were in there. And maybe I had a blood sugar problem at the time, too. No one ever told me to check my blood sugar. Um, ravenous. You just can't get enough food. Um, that can be a sign. Queasy. I tend to get hangry if my blood sugar is out of balance. I mean, if it takes me too long to cook breakfast, whew, everybody stand back. Um, and then feeling lightheaded or faint can be a sign as well of blood sugar problems. Um, so like I said earlier, one of the biggest problems is cardiovascular um, issues, high blood sugar, you know, it damages your blood vessels. Think about those sugar crystals. Think about rock candy, if you ever grew that, those sharp edges on those sugar crystals, and they're just floating through your blood, hitting all those tiny little blood vessels. Um, and then we have tiny, even tinier vessels in our eyes. Think about how little all those blood vessels are in there. And so the blood sugar can really damage that really quickly. Um, and then the kidneys, because your kidneys have to filter all of that um, as well. So we really want to protect the kidneys, protect the nerve endings. We hear about people with neuropathy and things like that. That is usually from um, blood sugar problems or autoimmune or both, right? Um, wounds that won't heal. Um, a lot of times people who have blood sugar problems, they just they get a cut or a bruise or something and it just will not go away. Um, a compromised immune system, um, infections, just frequent infections, um, itchy, dry skin. A lot of times that's related to your liver, but it can be related to your blood sugar as well. Um, I already talked about the mood swing and, and the weight. And then Alzheimer's is considered type 3 diabetes now. There's so many links to blood sugar and Alzheimer's. And so we just want to make sure we get under control because if you've ever had someone in your family um, who had blood sugar problems or Alzheimer's, then you know, um, no one wants to live like that. Um, so use a glucose meter, check your blood sugar when you get up in the morning, check it after your meals, check it throughout the day or wear a CGM, really, really tune in, use that information to see how well you can adjust things because you are in control. Um, we want to make sure that you're not having crashes. We want to make sure your food isn't causing your blood sugar to go up too high. And when your blood sugar goes high, it comes down in a nice, even pattern. Um, when you go to the doctor, there are some things that you want your doctor to check. And a lot of times they want, they will check your glucose if they remember to tell you to fast. Um, sometimes they didn't even remind you not to drink anything in the morning. For some, even, some people, their coffee can even cause their blood sugar to to mess up. And so you want to make sure you have clear instructions on what you should or should not have before you test your blood glucose. Um, but you want a fasting glucose. If you can just wake up and drink just water until you have your test, don't eat anything, then that would be best. Go overnight, just go skip, make your appointment first thing in the morning and go and have it done. So you want your fasting glucose, you want your fasting insulin, that's how much insulin's in your bloodstream after you're fasting for a while. And your hemoglobin A1C, which I've talked about for several episodes now, we want to see that because it shows what your um, blood glucose has been for the past three months or so. 
that is a really great indicator. I really like fasting insulin and um, hemoglobin A1C. That's what I like to look at with my clients. Um, so remember, stress can also drive blood sugar as well. And so that can be chronic stress. That can be sudden stress. That's, you know, anything. We live in the real world. We can't avoid stress, but we need to learn how to manage stress. Are you taking breaks throughout the day? Are you getting a good night's sleep? If you don't, that causes stress. Are you eating foods that are inflammatory? If you are, that causes stress. And so these things also can affect our blood sugar. So we want to make sure that we're taking time out throughout the day. We're doing some form of meditation. We're getting a good night's sleep, making sure that we, you know, we can go. You can have some stress during the day, but you just make sure that it doesn't take over your whole day. You shouldn't be stressed from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed and then struggle sleeping at night. Um, you know, sometimes we have an alarm. We have to use an alarm to get up. Sometimes you have to do that. That's a little shock to your system. Do some meditation when you wake up, set your alarm earlier, which <laughs> you need to go to bed a little bit earlier so that you can take a time out in the morning, bring your heart rate down, make sure you're resting before your meals. If you eat in a hurry, you eat in a stress state, that's going to drive your blood sugar up. So you want to make sure you're at least taking breaks at those times. Um, like I said, you want a good night's sleep. Sleep is really a great way um, to bring your blood sugar down. Don't eat too close to bedtime, two to three hours before bed at the most. Um, try not to eat a high glycemic meal before bed because you don't want um, your blood sugar up. You want your blood sugar to be kind of flat line when you go to bed so that it can work on cleaning up. The growth hormone can come out, clean up all the brain. Um, waves, clean up um, all the uh, junctions, not your brain waves, clean up all the junctions in your brain to repair, repair any damage, build any muscle, burn any fat while you're sleeping. How great is that, right? You have to eat the two to three hours before you go to bed, not within two to three hours um, and making sure your blood sugar stays stable before you go to bed. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I really hope that you will join me. I will put a link in the comments for the blood sugar workshop that is this Saturday. It will be recorded. So if you are not going to be available, it's a Saturday in the fall. We like festivals. Um, so if it's bad timing for you, it will be recorded. I will also put a link in here for a blood glucose monitor. Ideally, your doctor will give you one and your insurance will pay for it. Um, and so if you're not here in the U.S., there's a good chance you can get one without even a prescription. Um, and, but if you're here in the U.S., you have to have a doctor's prescription or I have a link that goes to a doctor that will give you the um, glucose monitor. They're a little bit pricey, but the information is priceless unless you want to prick your finger, which you can do that as well. I've done that and then end up with a lot of calluses on my finger. And then the timing, you have to really be careful tracking um, tracking and being really diligent about tracking what you ate, what your attitude and mental state was, your sleep was, and all of that as well to get the information. Anyway, we'll teach you all about this and more on Saturday. If you're going to come, make sure you go ahead and get your glucose meter before Saturday and go ahead and put it on before class so that we can see how our foods are affecting us in real time. Um, Jennifer and I will both be doing it as well. I haven't put my glucose meter on yet. I will put mine on later in the week before Saturday because I want it to be um, ready to go for the workshop. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please post in the comment. I hope that you will join us next Saturday. Have a fabulous week.